Hi, we are going to have a quick look at what do we mean by convenience yield when we talk about consumption assets. So remember, when we say a particular commodity is a consumption asset, what we are saying is that this commodity can be used in the manufacturing process or it can be used in part of a manufacturing process which provides value. So in other words, when you hold a consumption asset, such as here, for example, we are saying firm A owns the asset now, then there is a benefit of holding the asset now because the asset can be used in manufacturing. So let's assume that particular benefit is X dollars. Now, if firm A enters into a future, let's say firm A buys the same asset in six months time, so that's a six month future, then the firm A will lose that benefit of holding the asset now. In other words, the that same asset when it's part of a futures contract, you will not have that benefit of holding the asset now. So that's something very important and very unique for consumption assets, which is not in the um, in investment assets. So consumption assets, when you hold it now, there is a particular benefit which is not available in the futures contract because futures contract is for the future. So you lose the benefit of holding the asset now. So if we look at the price of a consumption asset, the futures price of a consumption asset, let's say it's F0, the futures price of a consumption asset will be less than or equal to the price you would calculate based on the formula that you would use to calculate the futures price of an investment asset. Now, if you remember, the futures price of an investment asset is simply the spot price plus the present value of the storage cost. You add those two together and then you take the exponent of the risk multiplied by the exponent of the risk-free interest rate multiplied by time. Now, if the storage cost is given as a percentage, as a yield, then you can use this formula on the right hand side. So what we are saying here is that the futures price of a consumption asset is less than or equal to this price here. I mean you can already start thinking about it. The reason is that the, the, the reason is the convenience yield. I'm going to show it to you in a short while. So when you calculate the futures price of a consumption asset based on this formula here that the actual futures price in the market will be less than what you get using this formula and the reason is the convenience yield because what we are saying is you can see here I have shown you that once you factor the convenience yield then there's a equality here so and and then you can isolate f not here so so these are the same two same formulas the only difference is that storage cost here is given to you as a particular amount and storage cost here has been given to you as a percentage of the spot price and then you can isolate f not by rearranging the formula to get a equation to the for the futures price of the consumption asset but what important to remember is that in technical terms the convenience yield is simply the difference between the left hand side and the right hand side but the actual explanation of what is convenience yield is convenience yield reflects the benefit that you gain from holding the asset now and that's the reason we are deducting the convenience yield because when you consider a futures contract of a consumption asset you lose that benefit and since you are losing that benefit we are deducting that that's that's what we are deducting so we are deducting the convenience yield when we are calculating the futures price of a consumption asset so it's simply the futures price of a consumption asset equals the spot price and then you multiply it by the exponent of the risk-free interest rate, add the 
storage cost when it's given to you as a percentage and then you deduct the convenience yield because when you consider the future a futures price you lose the benefit of holding the asset now and that benefit has been given to you as a per, as a yield and then you deduct that yield and then you multiply it by time to maturity so you can think of the convenience yield as the expectation of the demand or the availability of the commodity in the future now let's assume that we are looking at a one year futures price and let's assume that so this is the convenience yield let's assume that in, in one year's time let's assume that shortages are more likely in other words there's going to be a huge demand for this commodity then the convenience yield will be very high so that means if the convenience yield is high your futures price is going to be quite low compared to the spot price and and that makes sense because the shortages are more likely As, because if if you if you think for a particular commodity it's less likely it's going to be available then everyone's going to buy it now rather than waiting for one year's time and that's the reason the, the futures price will be lower compared to the spot price now if there's very little ch chance of future shortages so if there's very little chance of future short shortages then the convenience yield will be low because there's not going to be a huge difference buying the asset now and in one year's time so in that case the convenience yield will be quite low so re remember convenience yield reflects market expectations of future availability of the commodity so the convenience yield, be, yield will be very high if we are expecting a huge shortage in the future but if there's no chances of future shortages then the convenience yield will not be high it will be quite low so that's what we are showing here now remember for a investment asset the convenience yield is zero because if there is a convenience yield for an investment asset that means there are arbitrage opportunities so remember for an investment asset the convenience yield is zero in other words it doesn't make a difference whether you hold an investment asset now or in six months time or in one year's time because basically what we are saying is there's no benefit of holding an investment asset now and therefore the convenience yield is zero so hope you understood the concept you can put your questions in the comment section or drop us an email and if you enjoyed the video you can click like subscribe to our channel and we'll be sharing more videos on similar subjects and also visit our website to look at various frm support packages we have thank you